Welcome to Monday. The Zo What Morning Show. You see the chair. It's empty. You know why? Because we trust Jeff Brown to be on time. He's never on time. He's done this show for, let's see, we started this show in 2012. He's been on time all of about six times. From 2012 to 2021, Jeff, when he says, hey, I'm going to come to the show. I'm going to be in the studio. It's been about six times that he's actually made it on time or before time. Jeff is amazing, but he says he's on his way. So as we wait for Jeff, we get to what we normally do on this show, and that is promote businesses. Now, you are already familiar with some of the businesses that I promote, so I'd like to promote some businesses that you might not be familiar with, namely, now, Sarah, do you have the video? My son's video. Oh, yeah. Let's play my son's video right now. Because my son is about to do something amazing, y'all. And y'all better get on it right now. Check out this video of my son's Lion Lab work. Success is to some destination we're waiting to arrive at. It's not in any specific city. Every journey starts with you. No one gave me the blueprint. If you really want the keys, you gotta put in the work. This path is hard. Trust me, I know. And it gets lonely, lying with people you love, telling you it's too hard. You can't do it. You won't win. And the people who hate you trying to sabotage the road further. Success is a road made to push your limits. Because when you win, it's that much sweeter to look back and see what you endured. Never give up and embrace the challenge of success. This isn't a vertical program. This is the beginning of your path to success. Success is to some destination we're waiting to arrive at. It's not a Did you know that city. every person you meet has two lighthouses? What do you mean, two lighthouses? Every journey starts yes. with you. The seen and the unseen. Hi, no one I'm gave Zoe me Williams, the blueprint. The voice of reason. I have if a you new really book want to keep called The Shrouded Lighthouse: How to Uncover the Silver Lining in Every Situation Shift, I delve deep into the inner work that needs to be done in order to mature spiritually. Now this book is the follow-up to my 2019 release, The Holographic Relationship. In this book, I will talk about the two lighthouses. Let's go to my website right now to pre-order. The pre-order link is theshroudedlighthouse.com. The first 500 people to do so, you will get an autographed copy. Thank you all for supporting my work. We're about to change the game with this book. I appreciate you guys for always supporting the work that I do. I look forward to getting your feedback on this new book. Thank you. Don't be this guy. Raise your drive and libido. It's time to man up with X-Wolf. Boost your testosterone levels to help decrease your body fat percentage and increase lean muscle mass gains. Boost your stamina and blood flow for those tough workouts. And these workouts also. Go to xlabsubs.com to find out more. You know what we got to do? 
I played a couple of videos real quick. You saw my son's Lion Lab video. He's about to drop an app for a fitness and vertical training program for kids, uh, pros, college, high school, guys who are trying to get that edge physically. He's working with some of the best kinesiologists and biomechanics guys in the business, rehab specialists. You know, my son has been rehabbing his knee for six years. So, Jeff, it's split P green, exorcist green, and it's, a, it's, 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 it's against a green screen. So that means you're going to be partially invisible. Can I get through this segment? Come in here with a pumpkin turtleneck on and see what happens. Well, <laughs> you look you look like a 70s couch if you come in here with a pumpkin. Okay. okay. All right. I tell you what, I, I love the 70s. When you see me come in, you can just go. Oh, oh God. Shit, okay. Oh, 70s, nigga. We had our shit together in the 70s. Oh, my God. Here we go, man. So, yeah, Lion Lab. I also played X-Wolf. Uh, X-Wolf is a product. Uh, I call it the black uh, eugen uh, nugenics. You saw that uh, testosterone booster. We played that. Uh, and, and I love this product. I want everybody to know that I actually use it. So go to xlabssups.com. If you're, listen again, if you're over... 40, 30, 40? Well, if you, well, if you, you know that testosterone is... If you're over 40 and you eat meat... Okay, guess what? You made this point last week. Let's make it again. Bro. Okay. Okay. Uh, especially if you eat meat. If you're not going to give up animal protein, and I'm in, I'm in here with mixed company, but I'm going to be honest with it. You've been honest the okay. whole time. You get rid of animal... You get rid of animal, you, you get, you, you get rid of animal protein... And you can turn your dick into the evil arch villain it once was when you was 19. Oh. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Your dick what? means you no good. When you're young, your dick is the general manager of the team. And you are never going to the playoffs, nigga. You are never. Your dick will make you drive from here to San Diego in the rain with no windshield. Sarah, can we make Sarah? Can we make sure? Can we make sure that it, uh, my brother Jeff's mic is working properly? Okay, yeah. Make sure my mic working right. Because I'm trying to tell you. That X Wolf, you don't need to give. You can have a cheeseburger and still make your dick an evil arch villain. This shit is. Just, it's just, oh, look here. If you have never, okay, which camera am I? Which am I? I will kill all of you. Yeah. <laughs> so you done with that one. Okay. Let me explain something to you. This is that phrase, on your chest? I believe that I. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I got the green. Ooh, that flood, green little flower. Jeff, we gotta hurry through I, this. I, so you... <laughs> I have a phrase that uh, I believe I was. I've seen it, but I believe this is the phrase I've coined. It's called baby caffeine. Okay. Oh God. This is when you put it down on your girl so hard that when you get done, she go to the bathroom, she walk like a baby calf. You ever seen a baby oh. calf when they're first born? How the legs don't really work. If you've never baby calf anybody. <laughs> Then you probably can't borrow money. You can't use a car. Wow. If you are in that position, I strongly suggest you get you some X-Wolf. <laughs> baby caffin'. You want to do some baby caffin'? Huh? Do some baby caffin'. Them brand new giraffe legs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> baby giraffe legs. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a little baby caffin'. You never use the term move your hand. And oh, yeah. Use that term Keep going, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What is, say it again. Describe yeah, move yeah. your hand for us. Yeah, move your hand. Move, you move your hand. That's that's where you put it Get down your hand out the way and take it all. Come on, now. Come on, now. All that shit you was talking over dinner. That you hand is a buffer. If you ain't never heard, you gonna make me wake up my kids, then you ain't gonna Hallelujah. heard that. Hold the book, oh, shit. Okay. Yes, Lord. Okay. Yes, yes. You ain't never been in, if you ain't never said, uh, uh, be quiet, girl, you disrespecting my mama. Ooh. Oh. She right down the hall. She right down the hallway, girl. Stop screaming like that. We yeah. gonna get caught. If you ain't now move your hand. hand. Now move your hand. <laughs> hand. X-Wolf is for all of y'all. And go get me some water. Who forgot <laughs> those <laughs> wonderful days. <laughs> you ain't never seen a round three? 
You ain't never went to sleep with the, the sun on the way up and you on the way down because you didn't put your work in? Then you need yes, to Yes, Lord. X wall. Change your life. Yeah. Change your life. Went ain't from a wall. Girl drive by your house real slow. Go, that nigga live right there. <laughs> Need some tap, out. Some a tap out! Tap out! <laughs> okay, that's yeah. enough. <laughs> that's enough. That is enough, nigga. X, How much money do you need? <laughs> Shit. X Wolf Labs. <laughs> dot. No, it's X Labs Subs. Dot com. All right, we got a couple more things to promote. Total Package Energy. This is my favorite black-owned business right now, beside my own. Total Package Energy out of Oakland, out of the Bay Area. They've got a bunch of products that I use every day. I use some today. Nanotechnology, vitamin C, especially during COVID. Vitamin C, vitamin B12, and energy shots. You got to do it. I use these all the time. Eight times more absorption than the regular tablets. They're created with some nanotech, man. You put it under your tongue, jumps right into your bloodstream with the quickness. I'm not playing with nobody. Yeah, I told you Total I package you. energy. I should have worn an orange one. Look, look how dope that look. Look up. No, look at this. Do, do me a favor. Do me, do me Is a that favor. Not do, 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 do me a favor, Sarah. Yeah. Cut his mic off. He because he don't want me to get through these promos. Just say <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be quiet. I'll, there you go. I'll have some of this blue vervain tea. Though. Yes, I'll have some. Uh, but it's horrible. Yes, have some vervain. Also, <laughs> this is their pea protein product. It's unflavored, no sugar, gluten free, soy free, vegan. 20 grams of protein. You want that. You want that. Clean protein. That shit you get out of, uh, I'm going to say it, that shit you get out of GNC, that sawdust, sand, all kind of shit in it that you don't know. Does it have sawdust and sand? Sawdust and sand, sand, nigga. Sawdust and sand. I I think you're lying. It tastes like sawdust and sand. Yeah, yeah. You know, (laughs) you, 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 this here is clean protein. It doesn't put your body through a bunch of shit to get the protein out of it. You need the other shit. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, also, Hurricane Report. Hurricane. Yeah, she says, oh, yeah. The Hurricane Report. This is Al Jazeera for black folks in the hood. They don't. They're Our own news source. Yes. You want to see where I get some of my stories that we talk about on this show on a weekly basis? Go to the Hurricane Report. That is H Report. Dot news. Write it, take action, maintain freedom. Also, did you know I was in the CMOS business? Huh? CMOS. Wait Jeff. A Back up. Are you officially? So you don't be listening? No, I know you know. I, I, look here. Look here. Okay? Half the time I'm high. I didn't get high. I didn't, I didn't get that high this morning because I didn't have time to, to really grind. Hey, Jeff, you need to call your wife. Okay. Well, you can't. <laughs> Hi, babe. She watching the show now. <laughs> Hi, babe. Where, where your phone What's at, Jeff? At the house. <laughs> she at the house. Anyway. With the guns and the dope. <laughs> With the guns and the dope. <laughs> Jeff. What? Why is sea moss good for you, sir? Oh, God. Okay, first off. Um, you know how people tell you, uh, well, fish is great for you because it has... Omega threes and where the fuck you Wait, think? what's good for you? Fish. Fish. Yes. I love it, fish. Yes, but the, the 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 chief reason to to eat it is the omega threes in the fish oil. Guess where the omega threes in the fish oil come from? Where? Sea moss, nigga. Sea moss. Sea moss, nigga. Sea moss. Is it like a black sea moss? No. no. Like in a like in a fuck. In, no, <laughs> as in as in sea moss, comma nigga. Dot, 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 oh, comma. Dot, 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 you put a comma in it. Seamoss, comma. Seamoss, nigga. Nigga, ellipsis. Seamoss. What the fuck? People, people <laughs> fuck around with the number. You know, according to which nigga you talk to, 92 to 100 and something plus minerals that the body needs. True, the body needs minerals. Vitamins is some shit that some white man in a lab coat made up. Minerals are that shit. You need these Minerals. It's like sea moss goes in and goes, okay, what's missing? What's deficient? And you'll see over time, if you take sea moss, you'll feel better. Colors will look brighter. Uh, 
you'll start to 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 shit out some of that horrible shit you ate back in '97. You will cool. start. You, Is it still in there, Bruh, bruh, You got shit in there from the fourth grade. You gotta get that shit out. You mean? You mean like that a grill? Hot dog <laughs> swimming in your that grilled cheese? It's still in there somewhere. Pizza, still, cheese, pizza Thursday. Out. There you oh, go. The fish with the there you go. Some niggas, is, some niggas is going in the casket with dominoes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Get you some sea moss and some uh, X. So this is life. this is a company that I'm a partner in. So I can buy it from you. I've already told you this months ago. Well, I'm, that, well, I'm stocked up. So right weed now. keeps you healthy, but forgetful. Oh yeah, but creative. It's worth it. I got motherfuckers. How you gonna create here. and forget? Look here. <laughs> I don't have to remember. That's why you write shit down. Okay, memory is not my strong suit. I don't need that. I have other people for that. To remember your greatness. I tell my okay, wife cool. all the time, all I am is a genius. I don't have that other shit. Oh, oh God. All I am is a genius. business dot com. This is not enough. I, it, it, I want you guys to go to this website right now. CMOSBusiness.com. If you're interested, it's just CMOSBusiness.com. If you're interested in starting a micro business, we have a connect direct with the country of St. Lucia. Oh, shit. So this is for people who want to do, say, a micro business. Like you want to be able to, you know, package up your own little jars and sell them. You can buy your CMOS from us wholesale in bulk. All you have to do is call us at 1-800-298-8513. I've got one other thing to promote. Uh, what is that, Sarah? Um, Let's see if Sarah's on her shit. That, 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 can oh. okay, I say something about the sea moss again to help you out because somebody talking about how it tastes like the sea and they don't know how to get that. Well, you should taste like the sea. The first word should give you a clue. Uh, <laughs> but if you're trying to get around it, go heavy with pineapple. Pineapple and pear will cover that, that taste up. I, do, I started with pineapple and pear to cover up dandelion because dandelion is extremely good for you in... Uh, fighting cancer. It's 25,000 times more effective than chemotherapy. However, the shit tastes horrible. So, you put some pineapple and pears in it, and it's hard to taste. Same thing with sea moss. When you make you a smoothie, throw you some uh, pineapple and pear in it. If you like the sea moss taste, you like, you like the taste of uh, linguine and clams, get you some jackfruit, throw you some sea moss in it, and cook it in there and it tastes like sea Well, what about this? What about what, nigga? What about this? Damn shit being good. Bruh, how you about kill that? your body for your fucking tongue? You always want shit to be perfect. Oh shit, is that Furpo the magician? <laughs> Take Furpo off that the screen. Like Furpo the magnificent, nigga. <laughs> Look like he finna saw a lady in there. No, I'm just saying, I'm tired of people <laughs> wanting oh, everything to work out right. It don't taste like Burger King. No, nigga. Okay, and most shit that's good for you does not taste good. Stop killing your Man. body for your tongue. Is there a way to make it stop tasting like the sea? Well, it's called sea moss. Yeah, there's a way to make it stop tasting like the sea. <laughs> chitlins, nigga. Chitlins. <laughs> right. Sprinkle some chitlins. chitlins on your sea moss and see how yes. that works. <laughs> always complaining about something. God nigga, damn. Like Powerball. Taxes, nigga. Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Take the fucking sea monster dough. See, now I'm in my daddy's lane. Take it or don't. I don't give a fuck. Live or die, motherfucker. Live or die. The sea. Nigga, where'd it come from? The sea? This, this, this sandwich tastes like this. Oh, hey, before we get into today's topic. Don't make any more jokes. Before we get into today's topic, we've got a couple of current events to cover that. I am not quite happy about, but we gotta, shit, we, we gotta do it. What's that? Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Oh, God. Oh, like somebody stole my bike, man. I actually cried. Marvelous, the great Marvelous Marvin Hagler passed away on the 13th of March this is one of my personal heroes in much the same way that uh, Bruce Lee or Malcolm X oh, right up there right up there right 
Uh, I loved Sugar Ray Leonard, but Marvin was my hero for a lot of reasons. Born on the same day as me. Mm. Left-handed like me. Mm. I, I just loved the way he fought. He packed the lunch and got in the ring and weathered whatever the fuck you threw at him. And Marvin Hagler had no spurts. No spurts. Talk to me. Mar- Marvin Hagler had no bursts of energy, no spurts, no laying off. What was so dangerous about Marvin Hagler is you had maybe, maybe a minute in the first round of I'm not coming hard. Then for the next for the next time you're gonna see Marvin Hagler, he gonna whoop your ass at that level all fucking night. He Show me the minute you talking about. You lying on Marvin. Bruh, you gonna disrespect gonna, this man's legacy. No, this, no, that's not a disrespect. Marvin Hagler will feel you out for 60 seconds and then beat the fuck out of you. Okay, feel you out. All right, pace. that's different. He, so he, feel he you out. Okay. You out. And All then right. once he gets you down, he's not gonna slow down. He's like a Terminator. Did he's he feel out? out did he feel out Thomas Hearns? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, he, he didn't. No. He felt yeah, Thomas Hearn out with them hands. Nigga, he don't know. Because here's, here's what Tommy knew. Tommy knew. I got to get this nigga early. I got to get him out of here. He's going to be at <laughs> level eight and a half all night. He's he not going to go under that. He don't have to go to ten. Do you know why? Because he's been eight and a half since round one. You can't stand in front of that, man. You That, that dude... That dude they call that round. fight the war. The war. Them first three rounds. That's all it was. All was was three, three rounds. rounds. That first round was was throw the sink in. Somebody shot somebody's mama, nigga. Cause these niggas came out in the middle of the ring and said, "Put your foot right here. I'm gonna put my foot right here, and we finna throw them." And they went at it. Woo! Shit! I have never seen anything like that before or since. Yeah. So I mean, this is a great loss. And then when you find out. Mm-hmm. What it might be from. Mm. Mm. This is the part that annoys mm. a man that spent his look at him. Look at him. Look at the bottom right picture. That's a sixty-plus-year-old man who will beat your uncles and your granddaddy down. Oh, he beat the shit out your grandfather. Ew, you gonna have to go. You gonna have to come rescue your grandfather. You gonna have to wreck you. Oh, daddy, 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 don't don't mess with me. You gonna? I don't give a damn. I know my daddy. daddy. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh shit. Papa. Oh, oh my son. No, yeah, Papa. It's too late, nigga. It's too late. Yeah. Papa yeah. gonna get beat up. Fuck him. <laughs> you got that shit in that. You got that shit in that vial. Hey man. So. The rumors are that he took a COVID vaccine and had complications. Couldn't breathe or is having difficulty breathing. And then here we are. Yeah. So this is kind of reminiscent of Hank Aaron, who died shortly after taking the vaccine. Are we saying that the vaccine is probably not something you should take? Yeah. How yeah, about that? I think that is what yeah. we're saying. Then there's that. How about that not taking it? How about no? Right? How about but how about track record? So do vaccines work like hot pockets? So you can throw a hot pocket in a microwave. They're designed for microwaves. Yeah. Hey, right. how ready? 60 seconds, 90 seconds. We've got hot pockets, got right? But do vaccines work? The same way, the development of vaccines. Uh, well, it's not supposed to. I one am no proponent of uh, vaccines at all. And the first thing the Jasper Ash Shade Tree House Coons want to bring up is polio. Why <laughs> no polio? <laughs> polio. Okay. So, okay, I give you polio. I give you polio. But what you're going to ignore, what you're going to ignore is female, black females experimented on with no anesthesia. You will to ignore that. Oh, Tuskegee. Tuskegee experiment. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. I've had niggas tell me this. They weren't giving them anything bad. They just were allowing them to live with syphilis. Oh, oh thank you for clearing it up for a second there. I thought it was... 
was fucking sinister. But now that you mean, now it's PG-13. Thank you, nigga. What wow. the fuck are you doing? I have no, and I don't understand where we as a black people get this pragmatic benefit of the doubt that we always give me, oh, we're going to wait till the fact she I'm going to take mine. I'm going to eat it. You think I ain't going to go to work? Right. You, you think I'm going to lose my job? We all have to talk about shit. Keep fucking up. <laughs> okay. Keep okay. fucking up. You ain't going to fuck my money up. <laughs> Question. Question. You're holding the bunko shots. Bible thumpers. Oh, Yes, yes, here we go. Let's, uh, get the, let's get the organ together. Let's go and get it. Let's go and yes, get it. Yes, let's go pastor. And get in it. Yes. Uh, we are living in revelations right now. You know the book that your pastor has avoided for decades? My, 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 no my, money my, in it? my, 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 my. Ain't no money in speaking about the four horsemen. Yes, Lord, yes. Which but horse here, is riding through? Right fucking now. Yes. And if you believe in your Bible and you can say, Lord, we live in the last days, listen. This vaccine is not the mark. Motherfucker, what is? Preach, preach out. What is? Yes. What is? If you are willing to say, yeah, if you're, TV, if you're, if you're on TV fakes, if you're on TV fakes page, if you... Hey, uh, hey, we're not here to despair. We're I not here to despair nobody. Okay, especially a man who has the love for his mother to make a, a, a jacket out of her couch. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, okay. Lord, yes. You niggas can't have it both ways in front of me. Uh uh-uh. uh. Now you done talked all this holding the boko shot and Teach. Jesus is coming back soon. Oh, by the way, any word on when Jesus is coming back? Because if you notice, Christians is real quiet about the rapture right now. They ain't had shit to oh, say. Lord. It's about two and a half years late. Lord, have mercy. What are you talking about? Oh. You niggas supposed to done been done. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Okay, we need to do listen. That. I need to deal listen. with. Listen. I need to deal with. Make this rant shorter we, than the one you have scheduled. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are in the last days. If we listen. are in the last days, if the vaccine is not the mark, then tell me what is. Hold on, the boko shut that run. Shut that run. That's Pastor Jeff Brown. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Shit, George bullshit. That's Pastor that Jeff chicken, Brown. Out here. Listen, if they could give you chicken right. and weed to take a hot pocket vaccine, there has to be a conspiracy in place. Well, you know what? I'll take the vaccine. Uh, uh, well, the, the vaccine is important, especially from a biblical standpoint. Because we need to get this virus out of the way so we can get the faith healers back out. Oh, Jesus. According to, uh, by his stripes we are healed and lay hands. That don't work with COVID. Oh, 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 oh Lord. <laughs> uh, listen, okay, listen. Out. We, no. hey, but listen now. We, you have to get me off of Jesus. But wait Find now. You some facts. All I'm saying is we have lost a great boxer, one of the greatest boxers in to ever of step in the damn Don't ring. Lace him the fuck up. He's another one. Uh, Marvin Hagler never got in shape for fights because Marvin Hagler never got out of shape. He was always in shape. Was always in- and let me say this real quick. I, like I said, man, I, I respect Sugar Ray Leonard. Watch your mouth now. But he, Watch it now, it's about to get he little fugazi for me. What's fugazi? You waited five years to fight Hagler. Oh, until they- you thought he was over the hill. Okay. I feel like Hagler was robbed okay. in the Sugar Ray fight. Me and Modi argue about this all the time. And Modi's right. How you know? <laughs> How you know? Because I, because, uh, <laughs> first off, the uh, pity pat, tappity tap. Look, I got a chance to perform in front of uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and meet him. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I, I did cry. Uh, uh, Why are you crying? Dude, because, you know, I'm, I'm close to my feelings as I get older. I'm, I, 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 I cry, but I'll kill you with my bare hands. Uh, Play some music for him, please. <laughs> some crying music. No, I, no, I ain't, you ain't got to, I ain't finna cry now. I'm just saying that Sugar, that... Heroes was in short supply on the south side of Chicago in the 70s. They were. It's, right. Uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, um, uh, 
uh, TC from Magnum, what's my boy's name? Uh, 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 Roger Mosley, um, I'm, I'm running late, I'm running late. Jim Kelly, then we jumped over to uh, Three the Hard Way. Sugar Ray Leonard was one of my heroes, bro, or is one of my heroes. And everybody on my base bet against him except me. Uh, a bunch of, I made, I made some good bread on that fight. He was supposed, hey, know. it was a draw, or what was it, a split decision? It was a split, a split decision, but he won. No, he didn't. Uh, okay. Listen, pity pat tippity tap entertainment boxing ain't boxing. Okay. That man was a warrior, and he was ready to war. You know what Sugar Ray was doing? Moonwalking, sidestepping, boogalooing, centipeding the fuck away from. <laughs> you know what he was doing. Okay. Stop playing. So and then in the last that, 10 seconds of that every Martin round. Hagler went and took a shower, and he was unscathed after the fight. He wasn't touched. He wasn't touched. Okay. You thought he was lumpy? You think Sugar Ray lumped up Marvin Hagler? Uh, Marvin Hagler didn't close his eyes because he was squinting. He just got popped in the fucking face. Oh. I pull up, pull up some pictures of that fight. Oh, one more, please. Goddamn Sugar Ray lover. <laughs> anyway, rest in peace to marvelous Marvin Hagler. Uh... One of the greatest to ever do it. Peace and blessings to his family. Yeah, brother. Um, yeah, brother. We got to be very careful about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> about this vaccine. Is it needed? Well, you know, everybody can argue for yeah. or against. Uh, I'm not here to argue if it's needed or whatever for yeah, or against. Yeah, it's needed. We need to it's get needed. All right. Away. But I will say this. This girl done found a picture where he getting socked upside his head. <laughs> God damn you, Sarah. put on some roller skates. The object, the object of boxing is not what happened with Hagler and, and uh, uh, Hearns. His eyes are closed. She found the exact picture. The reason why should have nigga. <laughs> okay. Little nigga nice with them things. I feel that's, that's um, close to home. That's close to home. But yes, let me just say, uh, number love, none appreciation for the man. I appreciate yes. him greatly. Warrior, man. Um, Warrior. But back to the vaccine really quickly. Moderna. Mm. Please understand, you've heard us say this before. Mm. Words are spells. That's why they call it spelling. That's why they call it spelling. Right? This is why in ancient times, the priests were the only ones allowed to read. Right. This is why we have a word called layman. Right. That word layman means he is not of the cloth, he's which actually means idiot. he's uneducated. He can't read. He's illiterate. Mm -mm. Now, reading was a luxury back in the day. Right. It was It was for royals and dignitaries and high level you know yeah. people in society it wasn't just for, for the, common the commoner and that's what population gets its root from that's means commoner right uh even in the bible when they break down the bible you know through its many transliterations king james 1611 ad comes out of your greek and latin vulgate Vulgate comes from the Latin vulgar, vulgus, meaning unlearned animal, unread, unwashed, unkept, stupid, moron. So why is your highest holy book labeled under vulgus, the vulgate? Because they wanted to take the spirituality out of it. Because where there's spirituality or spiritual teachings or higher conscious teachings, there is an opportunity for liberation for the individual. Yeah. And how can I govern a liberated person? Right. Somebody that's going to question my box. We I made a box for you. Is the box not comfortable? Right. So in I'm order to... I'm going to build that cathedral. Right. So in order to push... An agenda, you need groupthink. You can't have individuality. You can't have self-sovereignty where a, pers a person is in control of themselves and they are the chief author of their narrative. You, you can't have that kind of person. You have to have a person who 
subscribes and aspires to narratives that are pre-existing that appear from their perspective to be successful. Oh, I want to be a part of this. This look like it worked. Right. Well, thank you. That you have <laughs> society produces that kind of mindset. Moderna, modern RNA. Mm. Look up the word. Mm. Modern RNA. The vaccine changes your RNA. Well, uh, now listen, let me tell you something. You know computers. Yes, sir. You know that PC, that, that Microsoft. Yeah. Get into that registry and start monkeying around with that. around with the directory <laughs> and have a light blue screen. <laughs> oh, get, in, get behind there and start messing with something. One comma. <laughs> one Throw code. something off back there. One number. One <laughs> equal sign and don't none of this shit work. None of this shit none works. It's just a big old piece of plastic. You might as well it, it do you better good to drop it out of window on somebody's head than it does <laughs> one space. And now your shit is... And now you gonna fuck with the human genome like that? Get in that active directory and start <laughs> deleting <laughs> shit. <laughs> zombies. Boop. Start seeing what happened to that computer. I'll tell you what. I'll take my chances with the goddamn flu. With this, this super flu. Cause that's... Okay, we got bigger bugs. We got bigger bugs, right? Yeah. We got bigger storms. Right? Yeah. The flu's bigger. That's, yeah. that's where I'm at with this. You know, the flu's, the flu's bigger. Flu's bigger. Okay. Uh, look up. They they trying to hide it. It's getting harder to find. Tony Robbins on the coronavirus vaccine, and how he talks about if the if the vaccine is supposed to be killing that much more people, well, shouldn't that much more people be dead on an average? Yeah. Well, we are still within the same place we have been for the past thirty years. Plus or minus fifteen thousand people die the same way. The same amount for the past 30 or so years. How many people die? That number is the fucking same. What has happened is no one's dying of the flu. Yeah, no one's dying of cancer. Nobody, unless you get hit by a car, you're not dying. A lot of shit has been put over in the COVID numbers. I'm not saying this shit ain't real. Oh, no, the shit real now. It's real. Because your sick, sick ass, ass had it. Yes. And you was on house punishment for, I mean, for I mean, six I months. I, was, I strongly believe I've had it twice. I ain't never had it. Okay. I'm naked. Okay. you like a gold star lesbian. Oh, God. Oh, God. For those of you who don't know, the gold star is a, a, a lesbian woman who's never, ever been with a man ever. The gold star lesbian. <laughs> For an outfit. Like an alien 
<laughs> black exploitation. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna, I don't know what. I'm gonna, uh, put that picture back up there. I'm gonna oh, put that picture back up. What the wait, fuck? Uh, oh, okay. okay. This is more. That's that's a lot of gay fuckery at work. Okay? That's not one dude. That's a couple of dudes. That have, <laughs> I've got a vision. I've got a vision. Oh, okay. God. I'm going to need 15 pairs of fat fuck jeans. <laughs> And I'm going to make oh, the most spectacular gown you've ever seen. But I'm a guy. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a model it if you make it. That ain't. That's not one nigga. That nigga right there did not make that. I want you to ruffle my waist. waist. I want my waist to be ruffled. Oh, yeah, with the ruffle it's spandex <laughs> ruffle. <laughs> okay, this is what I ask, and, and I have to ask because oh, it's so God. foreign to me. Okay, that's enough. Take him off this. I try to. Chances are smooth. I try to. But yes. Chances <laughs> Take it off. You don't okay. get that smooth chested nigga up there, okay? That's Sarah. That smooth chested dude right there likes your nephew. He ain't think about you. Now, okay. uh, 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 this is what I try to tell unrealistic women over thirty-five. Okay, that fucking six-two, hundred eighty-five pound, uh, extremely athletic, extremely intelligent, upwardly mobile dude with a lot of money. The only thing he wants from you is your niece's Instagram. That's it. He's not fucking with you. That's, that's, them dudes don't fuck with you. I swear, I know a bunch of them. They don't. They don't. That What's your niece's like Instagram? Yeah, she's like, yeah, they deal with that. Ad hot and spicy. Right. They like girls. <laughs> they like, yeah, them dudes like girls. They don't like women. They like girls. So they now you need to. You need Somebody to, said it's a moist ass. Why the fuck are we? Hey, that's another May 23rd. Don't Sarah, get twisted. If I see another May 23rd, you see that shit? You, you missed it. Between Mr. T, T, you missed it. I, mean, I don't want to see you what You don't want to see it. Oh, okay, sorry. Sarah, what Sarah, are you doing? Sarah, this is all again. He told me he didn't see it. I was trying to I didn't tell you the shit. Okay. 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 Sarah, blame it on me. I'm gonna tell you right okay. now, Sarah. If you Sarah, don't delete you put another them pictures, man up like that, and I'm gonna come over to your apartment and shit in your plants. You know the little plants you got in the front? Oh, how do you know how plants? Oh, cause I'm psychic. I'm gonna shit right in them. You come out and find the man-sized turd right in the cactus. Okay. No, don't do that. Oh, I don't want to see that shit. I have no. I know this. I know this sounds shocking. I know it feels odd, but I'm actually an alpha male. Ooh, that's got to fly. That too no, don't say that yet, because we got a topic. Okay. You might right. feel like you something else. Watch. No, I, I don't think. Okay. Try me. Nigga, I know you. You're on, nigga. You're on. You could be like, you know, I ain't never thought of it that way. Uh, so. With regard to my sexuality? No, I, no, I, we're not talking about your sexuality. Okay, what we talking about? You said you was an alpha. Oh, oh, okay, okay, well then we'll, we'll, we'll get away from, from the titles. Let me See, go. over here fucking up, about I'm to ruin guy, the topic. Okay, I'm a goddamn grown-ass man. There you go, from Chicago. From Chicago. With a turtleneck on. Turtleneck on, that quite frankly, is not as chilly in here as it is outside. That neck hot than a motherfucker. <laughs> that neck perspiring like a motherfucker. However, however, all that, all that, all things being equal. Uh, you only have, I'm planning, you know, I'm 55. If I live to be 110, I'm halfway through. You halfway through? I'm halfway through. If I live to be 110, I'm halfway through. Wait till you see. You're going to look like Tai Pan from <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China. Anyway, the of the North American Wait, male. Wait, don't go there yet. We got a topic. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, yes, Hijacker. Okay, my bad. Show Jack by Jeff Brown. Show Jack. I come in and run rubble. I'll take over your show. Jesus Christ. Down the road of non sequiturs. But we got to finish this up. I want to get to one other uh, current event. Reggie Warren from the hit 90s R&B group oh, Troop passed away yesterday <sighs> now all of us from Pasadena have been in contact with each other and everybody's been we we grew up with each other yeah. you know John John is the reason I met Mrs. Brown well you owe John John some money I owe John John so much love John John better not never want for nothing not a goddamn thing me and John John was on the same junior varsity basketball team okay or 
Was it junior? No, it was first period gym with the junior varsity basketball coach, Art Large. Shout out to John John. Damn, Reg. Damn. Damn, Reggie. Damn. And cool as a motherfucker. Cool, man, one of the coolest brothers. Just a cool ass. Rodney from the group called me yesterday to inform me uh, of the brother's passing. He said he passed at 1.15 p.m. And, uh, you know, was he, sick? Was he, he was struggling. And uh, not to get into any, to stitch, yeah, but he yeah. was struggling. And, and, you know, one of the hardest deaths to accept is when death seems like a reprieve. Yeah. When death feels like the white flag was thrown in. Right, right. You know, because you're conflicted in that space, right? It's, damn, you know, I lost my homie, but at the same time, there, there, you might feel bad for a sense of relief that says, well, he's not suffering, right? And that's how I feel right now with regard to Reggie. Uh, when you know somebody from damn near elementary, you know, and... All the way through high school. I remember when they, first off, Rodney lived across the street from me. So when Mama Sita first dropped in 88, he came to my house. It was like, it's on the radio. <laughs> That's you know, five heartbeats. He was like, yo, it's out. So we listen, and then we go to Alan's house. See, I was on Catalina. You know, I was on Catalina. Me and Rodney lived on Catalina Street, and I think Alan lived over on Mar Vista. Okay. So after we listened to it on K-Day, oh, we go over to Alan's crib and listen to it over there with him. I think it was on KJLH. So Troop, Troop was a city accomplishment. Because one thing about Pasadena, if you look at Pasadena right now, because of regentrification, the black population in P Pasadena is now at around 7%. Get the fuck out of here. When we were growing up in Pasadena, it was at 44%. Wow. And there were black families raised. Like, like a lot of people don't understand. Like a lot of people from Pasadena, you don't go past Orange Grove if you visiting for the Rose Parade. We understood that. Right. Like, don't y'all stay down Colorado Get Street. Get your car, put on your seatbelt. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your situation down there. Now, you you venture further into the interior. And you about to see some slew-footed chucks. <laughs> it's going <be, laughs> to be a, a, a different kind of experience. That's a nice car, homie. So, <laughs> get all that. And what people don't understand about Pasadena, like, I hate stereotyping. Like, you think Pasadena is the little old lady and the billions of dollars of the Rose Bowl. Yeah. But Pasadena, especially in the 80s, more than had than one of the highest murder rates per capita. Because you got to remember, Pasadena as a city is what, 100,000 people? Hmm. Per capita? It had one of the highest murder rates because of the gang infestation there. Uh, it's blood on both crips. sides, but it's Bloods, Crips, and Hispanics. Oh, shit. So, you know, a lot of people, man, you know, you see the image and you think, oh, that's what that place is like. Yeah, you see the Rose Parade. But along with Troop, you had Ricky Irvings, who played at John Muir High. Uh, you had Jock Vaughn, who played at John Muir High. You had Stacy Ogman, mm. who played at John Muir High. You had me. Chad Brown, who came from John Muir High. You had Chris McAllister, who came out of Pasadena High. Like, you had Michael Cooper, who played for the Lakers. Like, people don't realize Pasadena is a black city, and through gentrification, has become less and less black. So... When Troop in 88 and 89 blew up, that was a win for the whole city. Right. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of people are scared to acknowledge their Pasadena ness. Tamala Jones. Pasadena. Tamala Jones, what up, Tam? That's Pasadena, dog. 
Mark Voorhees, Pasadena. Mark Voorhees. Oh, wow. Right? That's, Pasadena was an amazing place. And it's a little different now. It's still amazing. It's a little different now. But this is why this one hurts so much. That brother right there, Reggie Warren, lived in the King Manors. That's Dina's own. Now, the King Manors today... It's not what it was. It's not what it was in the 80s. Yeah. You couldn't play around in the King's... Yeah. It was not a place to be. Uh-huh. Anywhere your rent, $18? Yeah. <laughs> a certain type of clientele. You understand? For the same reason that you don't have a, a, a night at your club where it's free. <laughs> Anywhere your rent, 18 Yes. Yeah, you, you done spent... $784 on groceries, but your rent 18 18 bucks. <laughs> yep, it used to be Porsche sitting out there, BMWs. Nah, man, let me. Used to be uh, $18 rent. That was, <laughs> hey, Carrie Champion, Tidra Moss, uh, Inger Miller. Man, it's a lot of Pasadenians, brother, black men and women. So just please understand, man. Uh, Jackie Robinson. <laughs> We keep going. Pasadena is an amazing place, and he's one of our examples of greatness. And I just want to wish the brother and his family uh, peace to their heart. Absolutely. I know this is a loss, a Absolutely. huge loss. It's a loss to everybody who grew up rooting for this group. Right. Right? So um, I just want to send some love out on love that. Love to your family, bro. All right. Jeff Brown, you want to do your intellectual rant first, or do you want to go into the topic? What's this small topic, sweetie? No, I have a specific topic okay. for today's show. This is what I'm going to do with the rant. I'm going to take off piggybacking whatever this topic is, and I'm going to end another thing from Does that make sense to anybody else? Did you get it? The white lady got it. Say it again. She got it. The white lady got it. Say it again. Let me tell you something. I'm working on a project right now. It's, it's really easy to get niggas interested and excited because niggas is going through hell. When white people get excited about what the fuck you're doing, yeah, well, you need that shot. What does that mean? As if, okay, it's the truth. It's, uh, I speak certain truths that people aren't comfortable with. Like, um, uh, and Entertainment. Somebody said, what the fuck are it's you like, talking about? It's just like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, Jeff Brown. Look, I'm just being honest. If, if you, being in Hollywood, being with no niggas on your, with no Jews on your team, is like being in the NBA with no niggas on your team. You can play. You just ain't going to win. You suit up. You come on down. <laughs> The Washington, Washington Generals. Yeah, you Washington Generals. <laughs> you get some Jews on your team. If you don't know, you look around your team. There are no Jews. Who's running the meetings? Who's who's setting the meetings? Who's dealing with the money? You are just a bunch of niggas with ideas. Oh my! I got a bunch of niggas with ideas at the house. We try to make. Okay, anyway. Thank you, Jeff. Let, can I set you up for your rant? Because you no, tend... no. I want to go into the topic. Let's do the topic, and then I'm gonna jump off the topic. Because the every topic. answer is a rant. Pretty much. So okay. if I ask a question, I'm just gonna, you just, I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here. MC filibuster. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I just keep Sorry, talking. I got a lot of shit on my mind. Hey, one show's not enough. I need a show right after this one. See, when you go in your pocket and find shit like this, there's a dog on her right here. That's a Well, let me say, in the same pocket, is there some hand sanitizer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't put shit on the bags, though. I'm just saying. I, nasty I motherfucker. I off a of damn, I got the roller. I got. I go to Smart and Final and get that big-ass roll of, of plastic bags and yank that some bitch off and put it in my pocket. So anyway, let me do this real quick, set up the thing here. Uh, I have an interesting st- uh, show topic for you, Jeff. Yes, sir. What type of man mm. are you? Are you an alpha, beta, delta, sigma, gamma, gamma, omega? Do you know there's a whole chart that describes oh, wow. all these different Greek? Types of males and yes. we just throwing around alpha. 
helpful. Which one? Look at this. Here's the alpha. Dominating and charismatic. The born leader understands his priorities and always utilizes his time. First off, let me just say a lot of this shit is vague. Yeah. Because an Omega man could utilize his time quite well. He could be a master of time management, but maybe not the born leader. See, this is why I say don't lube your butthole up for ideas that are designed to fuck you. <laughs> okay. A lot of people get fucked by ideas. Ooh, do not lube yourself up. Yeah. Do not put on the pink moo moo and the, it's light the incense. God damn it, Sarah. That's Sarah. It. No, 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 no. Shit your cactus. Shit your cactus. Just wait on it. I'll start with this one. Just know. wait on it. She really Just be putting up it. like. I'll tell you what. Tell you what. Like straight <laughs> you, popsicle. I, I make sure it's runny. Banana pudding and castor oil. Put some castor oil in some banana pudding oh before God. I take the shit in your cactus. So I want to know what type of man do, <laughs> you, because most of the times you hear alpha and beta. They say the beta man yeah. is modest and easygoing. Sure. Are you beta saying an alpha male? For me. But can you, are you saying an alpha male can't be modest and easygoing? Right. Yeah. So you, this is what I'm saying, how you get like fuck. Because wherever there is imbalance in the thought, there will be imbalance uh, in the behavior, mm. right? Now, this is how you're supposed to act. There's this black and white bottom lining of what they say it's supposed to be. Okay, ideal husband type is the beta. Now, this is where I agree. Mm. Because let me just say this. In order to be a husband... To a woman, you got to be compromising. And I think, I don't think being compromising is a bad thing. I think compromising who you are in order to make somebody happy is a horrible thing. So compromising mean meaning being considerate of, thinking about that person, being thoughtful when making decisions for yourself, if you're in that type of union, I think that's good, right? But I think oftentimes you got a lot of buttercreams that are fearful of loneliness. How many men have you heard say, because this is some beta male shit to me. Some niggas that actually live with their women. How many men have you heard say, Jeff? What? Somebody got to take care of me. Why? No, why? <laughs> why? No, I was nah, but I get it. I hey, I'm, it. I'm getting up there. I've seen there. it. I've seen How long it. you think I'm gonna be out here by myself, nigga? Right. You think I'm gonna be out here fucking around by myself forever? Right. The Bible says it is not good the man should be alone. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm gonna go to the church. It also says if you don't work, you don't eat, nigga. How about that? Right. What I'm saying is. When compromise becomes a tool of manipulation to seek out and acquire comfort, that's a toxic person. And oftentimes they prey on, say, a woman who may have abandonment issues. They seek that particular type out. out. They'll be like, hey. I ain't really got to eat baby calf, huh, really? I get, yeah. All I got to do is do what daddy didn't do. Just show up. Don't uh, don't chew with your mouth open. You need a hug. Daddy ain't never hugged you. Come here. Bring your ass right you into this motherfucking hug. nape. Well, guess what? Put I you right in my nook. Right here. You, you have right. a girl ever called this her nook? Uh, yeah. Let me get in my nook. Yeah. See, if daddy ain't never put you in his nook, right? now you looking for a nook. Right. A Look breakfast back. nook. Right. <laughs> you, ain't never, you ain't never had nook <laughs> without it involving nooky. Nook. Always involved nooky. Leads to nooky. Hey. never hey. the magic of a father-daughter relationship. 
she is plugged into his masculinity. He is plugged into her femininity, uh -huh. and it has nothing to do with sex. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with sex. Uh -huh. It has to do with how we as two beings nurture one another. And, and, and dads always set proper boundaries for women. So when women don't have dads in place or good dads or healthy dads in place, what happens is the boundaries get blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Then you wind up dating, and I know this is this a lot of people don't want to hear this. You wind up dating the unfinished work your father was. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You did wow. Well, uh, you calling them in and then you say well why am I calling them in so you can reconcile it yeah it, listen hurt disappointment trauma it's not supposed to be stored no. it's not jerky okay. <laughs> it's not supposed to be stored we're going to talk about on the rent the horrible <laughs> nigga beacon that's my book Jeff the, the Shrouded Lighthouse. No, that, that ain't the that, horror. That is the horror. <laughs> Pull up the damn commercial so Jeff can uh, know that. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen the Shrouded Lighthouse, but I'm talking about the horrible nigga beacon. It's the exact, it's the bizarro of the Shrouded Lighthouse. But I think it's both because it goes for men too. What do you mean? Men attract horrible women too okay. because of the dysfunctional relationships they have with their mama. Uh, understood. Understood. If you're not cool with mama, yeah. there's really no way you're going to yeah. be cool with any woman in your intimate life. Well, do you know why one of us... Hey, big mama! Hey, baby! Hey, hey Emma baby. Sue! Hey. Yes! I, was, I wasn't okay. cool with big mama. Why he wearing a turtleneck? It ain't that goddamn cold. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tomato soup and crackers? I got it back there on the stove. I got some boiled chicken wings. <laughs> my grandmama knew how to... My grandmama could read your, pop, your pockets, bro. <laughs> Who asked to borrow $46? 46 dollars Baby, let grandmama hold $46. What you gonna say? That's what you got in your pocket. She didn't ask for a 50. She asked for $46. How does she know that I have 46 disposable dollars? Oh, my God. She didn't ask for 40 She asked for $46. And I got it in my pocket. That must be God. Here, take it. <laughs> Man. Oh, that must be God. That must be God. How but, must... but look at all of these different types, right? You have a gamma male, introverted and super sensitive. Are you telling me that an alpha male can't be introverted? Are you telling me that I don't know niggas with all these traits? That's what I'm saying, right? This reminds me. Shit, you catch me on the wrong day. Uh, 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 let me see. Uh, um, works a lot, but overshadowed by his peers? God damn. Has big plans, but lacks determination and focus? God damn. Laid back, not to chasing success or money with the right strain of weed? God damn. Works hard, but unable to draw attention? Nigga, three decades. Uh, 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 I'm white on paper. If you look at my credit, and you look, this, is really like, this you motherfucker look said I'm white. Oh, I am a Caucasian male on paper. Do you know? No, what? you're not. Oh, nigga. Okay. Uh, work Wait, hard. What is white on credit? White, Please. white on credit is wow. Jeff is wow. You've really been responsible with your finances. Oh, wow. Would you like a half a million dollars with just your signature? Well, here you can certainly have it. White on paper is um, for for. For sake of uh, right or wrong, I don't know if it's right or wrong, I used to do a bit about it. I named my daughter Bailey Gabrielle. That way you can't tell she's black until she get to the interview. You got to respect <laughs> my baby's fucking resume, white man. That's yeah. yes. Now, and now watch this, though. Now watch this. A bit of information from the great Antonio Moore when he did the paper mm -hmm. with Sandy Darity and others at Al that talked about the 11 things that won't close the wealth gap. Hmm. And one of those things on that chart is savings. Come to find out. No, you can't save your way to wealth. Come to find out black people are more responsible with their money than most other races. Because they have less of it. But they save more. The okay. savings were more. I'm going to blow this. Yeah, yeah, because you make $14 a fucking hour. You better save something, shit. Okay, rich folks don't think of, Okay. This Go shit. on a 
another tangent and see what the fuck happened before you rant. Go on another tangent. Well, how many, is anybody counting how many tangents? Okay, saving money. We got to do San Antonio. We got to do. We got to do Houston. We got to do Atlanta. Come on, get your shit out of me. We got we got tangents all over this motherfucker. You understand me? We got a tangent in every city in America. Yeah? Go on another rant. Go. Saving I dare you. Money. Saving money is the cornerstone to poverty. It is the cornerstone. <laughs> Ain't nobody told to save their money but broke people. <laughs> Rich people don't save You better hold on to that money, nigga. Fucking invest <laughs> You don't make money saving it. The problem with saving money is that the first dollar you save is not worth, it's worth more than the last dollar you save. And I don't care if that was 10 minutes ago, 10 months ago. You just waiting for the ago. dollar to crash. Nigga, it's okay. You that motherfucker in that, what was the movie with uh, John Cusick? And he was the limo driver and he was saving his family. Oh, yeah. The end of the world shit. 2012. It was that 2012? Okay. You the motherfucking weirdo that was standing in the motherfucking caldera at Yellowstone Park. <laughs> <laughs> you know the dollars for the gold, nigga? I'm oh, telling you. Yeah, you Woody Allen. It's Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Woody Harrelson. That's you. Look, bro. Look. This shit over. Look up here. The, uh, We're going to be spending yen tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> uh, yen and Bitcoin, bitch. <laughs> Here you got my shit together for me. Shout out to comedian Steve White who turned me on to him. Bob Kiyosaki. Look up Bob Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. We know who he is. Look up Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone was right in the same office at the foxhole with Marcus King. Get the fuck out of here. I done kicked it with Grant Cardone a you thousand times. You listen to that white boy right there tell you about money and how stupid you are buying your first home with only one door. Black people ain't taught that shit. With one door. One door. You are buying a piece of property that only you are on the hook to pay for. That's bullshit. The same credit, the same numbers to buy a house just about anywhere in America. Just about. You can buy a four unit dwelling <laughs> for the same money. Stay in one and complain about the rent like the rest of the motherfuckers. <laughs> but you're not told that. You're not you're not taught that. You're taught to work your ass off from Monday to Friday, take Saturday and Sunday, and blow everything but your bill money and be back here on Monday. That's what you're taught. That is not the proper approach to money. It is not. And it will keep you broke. Keep saving your money. All you gotta do is ask him a question. You stay broke. You ask him a question, wind him up, let him go. Yeah. Wind him up, get out of the way. <laughs> get the fuck out of the way. I'm gonna start talking to you like Floyd's uncle used to talk to him. Keep that stick out there. Walk him down. You gonna fuck him up? Right. It's all right. Keep walk that stick out there. Just walk him down. You'll be ready to go in the night round. Here's some shit I used to, I, I love to do at parties. I love to do this at parties. Like like uh, some sisters will be talking, mm -hmm. and I'll just come over and go. The white woman cook better. What about that? And just just walk away. Then just walk away. I nigga ain't shit. I can't stand. What the fuck is he talking about? That, yes. Uh uh. White women make you happier. What about that? And then just walk away. Just, just walk away. Just, just leave. That's them. called the, the hand grenade. You just throw them in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hand grenade questions by Jeff Brown. Right, 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 right. So, right, right. Uh, if you love yourself so much, why are you guys wearing weave? Uh, weave? What about that? And just walk away. Just walk away. Just leave them and leave them. But what if she hit you with? Because the black woman created weaves, and we wore them in ancient Egypt, too. Uh, I'll say, uh, the side show? Yeah, yeah, you. Okay, uh. Why you put her? <laughs> yeah, that's because that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, bitter-ass Tracy. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's, no, that, no, that's Tracy. Oh, bitter-ass Tracy. <laughs> oh, bitter-ass Tracy. Tracy, what you doing? Okay. <laughs> Tracy done had five horrible niggas and can't figure out that what they had in common was Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, put that yeah. butter knife down. Tracy, put the butter knife. No, you bring the butter knife on over here, Tracy. Okay? No gun roll. You won't watch yourself. Oh, shit. No, dude, it's, it's just honest. It's just honest. The black woman that tells me that weave was first done by us, heard that from you, nigga. She ain't ready. Well, what's wrong with that? that? Here's what's wrong with it. Here's what's wrong with it. The knowledge that we started at first is not what's keeping Indian people, not what's keeping Asian people in business. 
It is the desire to run away from what you would be naturally three months after societal collapse. That's who you are. The black woman in her unweaved, unpermed, all natural state is the earth's original blueprint for beauty. Any subtractions, additions, or substitutions are quantum steps in the So right you're direction. telling me the ancient Kemetans yes. didn't wear weeds. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that ancient Kemetans They fucking created it, man. Ancient, okay, I'm telling you that ancient Kemetans and these sisters that wear weave now is apples and bowling balls. That's what I'm telling you. And I agree. And this is where. And anybody who brings up ancient commitments. Well, damn, can I get a point in edgewise? It's on some bullshit. <laughs> can I get a fucking. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, and silence means you go. See, sometimes you have to look off and just take a moment. Or do like my daddy. You know what, woman? I'm not going to even honor that with a, with a response. I'm just going to stare at you. <laughs> No, what I'm saying is, this is where I agree with you, the bowling balls What's that? thing here. Yes, sir. Sisters of today, the weaves are emulating Caucasians. Thank you. Not that the shit. weaves from ancient Kemet had an entirely different meaning, and they were emulating themselves, right? So even Queen Hatshepsut, let's hear you say that, Jeff. Hatshepsut. Chef, chef, chef. Chef, is that you speaking in tongues? Hepshepsut. Okay. Even the great queen Hepshepsut wore a beard. Okay. And it was made of boar's hair. Okay. To represent her time as Pharaoh. Okay. Now, later, of course, they didn't, you know, try to erase, you know, all of her time as Pharaoh, but. That was subsequent uh, dynasties. The bottom line is, if somebody else is the author of your culture, you're a slave. Yeah. You don't even need chains. They didn't set it up for you. You don't even need chains, right? You don't need servitude. You don't need any of that. You're already in servitude if you're not the author of who you are, period. When we get back to this, and this leads me back to this list, in African-American society, what do you think the odds are that one of these designations that our men would be the most? Which one? Of these um, designations. I'm going to either go Gamma. Um, introverted and super sensitive. The yes man at office, at the office, has no. big plans, uh, but lacks determination. Where does the snitch fall in this? Uh, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the, the snitch. I got to give him either Gamma or Delta. But you can, dude. Dude, okay, let's go with snitch. Cause Wants not, attention but can't get it. There you go. I'm not, Works hard but unable to draw attention. Fuck what the, kind of whole ass man? Okay, go ahead. What, what, uh, fuck the first column. <laughs> fuck, the, the, fuck that first column. Dominating and charismatic, modest and easygoing, introverted, super sensitive, skillful. And yeah, no, fuck all that. Let's deal with the last column. Understands his priorities and always using his time. Uh, no, that's if you said most niggas. No, that's not most niggas. No, no, no. Works a lot, but overshadowed by his fears. Uh, that's a lot of niggas. That's that. a lot of niggas. That's a lot of niggas. God that. damn. Has big plans, but lacks determination and focus. That's Nigga, do you know how many? That's why talent is cheap in the hood. I, 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 I'm not gonna people. argue. People always talking about what uh, uh, the words of my father. You know what potential mean? It means you ain't done shit yet. That's another way to say potential. That's another way to fart. That's another way to fart in front of company. (laughs) Potential. It means you ain't done shit yet. Ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen. uh, From now on, hear ye, hear ye. The official term everywhere I go. For that's just semantics and rhetoric. 
is it is that's just another way to fart in front of company. <laughs> I can't wait to bust that out on some plat platitude in this Jasper ass shade tree house coon that is spouting off fucking sound bites. I can't wait. That's just another way to fart in public, sir. Oh, right. I love that. Right. Where does pull pull up that shit again? Let's see this link. Where does envy lie on this chart? Envious. Oh, bruh! Bruh! Works a lot, overshadowed by his peers. He's Where? envious of his peers. Okay, Has there we go. Has big plans, relaxed determination and focus. He's uh, envious of those who have big plans, but have determination. Where's self-hate on this chart? Uh, works hard, but unable to draw attention. Mmm, mmm. Laid back, not chasing success or money. You can do that from hate yourself. That's the problem with this list. It's purposely fucking vague. That's what I'm saying. Well, this reminds me of the communication list. Hmm. Right? And I always, because, you know. What's a communication list? It's, it's a bunch of motherfuckers out there who swear they, they really know this shit, but. I got one of my childhood homies in the building. He knows when I when I go into an area of research, I strip the motherfucker naked. Okay, what's, what's your name? Hey, name? No, that's not what we're doing. We're not bringing them in. Hey. Okay, okay not your name. You're your name, name. Jeff, name, no. Okay, be honest. This, you went to prison. No. Ain't no way uh, you can you can have a regular life and you hey. got many fucking books. You said books. He can't help. He can't help. Who else reads that? Jeff, Jeff, stay here. Even when you hear, you in there, and when you're not in there, you over there. But you're never here. I need somebody to know you to be honest. There's no fucking way. Have you seen Zoe's book collection? Jeff, can I? I saw some of it. Nobody's read that much without doing three to five. Jeff, how do you have the time? Can I? Can I get back to my point? Okay, I'm sorry. Well, I think I forgot it. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I need somebody to be honest with me about that shit. This motherfucker ain't ready. Anyway, okay, go ahead. When I get into something, yes. I I really break it down. And when you're studying communication, because you hear people say that all the time, what's the best way to fix a relationship? Oh, it's communication. Well, what do you mean? I contain it was communicating. Right. What do you mean? When he right. Get on the bus. He mean get your ass bit bop bop on the goddamn bop, 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 bop. bus. So, That's but when you when you study communications, you understand that there are styles, communication you know, man, styles. <laughs> right. You understand that there are communication styles. You have yes. combative, comparative, collaborative, cooperative, uh, crazy, avoidant. <laughs> right. Yeah. You have Good compromising. Quality. And what they say is, with those different distinctions, they, they also caution you. They say, look, no one is monolithically in one, right? No one is just competitive. Right. No one is right. just combative. You're phasing in and out of all of these things, yeah. right? And the question is, which one is your go-to style? Right. right, and that comes from the attachment that you got, or how you modeled communication, mm. conflict, or resolution yeah. in your family. Where do you go to when the bell rings? Right. So again, this list right here is also sending that message. I don't believe that there's an alpha, right, an alpha male that doesn't have some of the traits of the other things oh, underneath, yeah. right? And I don't believe, like, because right there at the bottom, Sigma, read Sigma. Uh, super smart and extremely attractive. Yeah, well, that could be me. Uh, manipulative, manipulative mastermind. He is super ambition and is his own boss. Okay. Now, listen to this. Okay. Here's a deeper one. Because I have a list. 11 signs of a Sigma personality. Unresponsive to authority. Okay. Can you say a lot of brothers are unresponsive to authority to some degree? Uh, sure. Unless that authority has a check. Or uh, can impose its will. Right. If, uh, if it's a larger aggressor. Exactly. Adapts easily to change. 
treats people equally, quiet, and contemplative. This is the sigma, self-reliant, great self-awareness, marches to his own beat, right? You enjoy being alone. You like to think. You think independently. You don't like authority. You'd rather keep silent. You win by not playing. The Sigma sound like G status, my nigga. Yeah. This one says the introverted alpha. It's, it's the inverse of the alpha. Mm -hmm. It's the fuck you and all the shit you the believe in. Hold on to that bullshit. You gonna keep that. To me, that the Sigma reminds me of Krishnamurti. Let me get you a Rouse bag for all that. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Krishnamurti is the one that said, none of this shit is relevant. He said, even the information I'm giving to you, don't focus on me or you can leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can leave if you focus on me. He said, if you're not doing this shit yourself, then you're wasting your time even being up here. Don't cross your legs. You're not a guru. Ah. No, he was, and that's one of the things that resonated to me personally, when I started reading Krishnamurti, hmm. it was like I was reading shit that was me. Like, I, I could have wrote this because this is how I think. The Sigma male is fuck all your shit. And I think a lot of people take Sigma male characteristics or let me say the Sigma personality mm -hmm. and use it as a defense mechanism. When you look at this right here, Sigma male traits, independence, introspective, silence, intelligence, troublemaking. Why would he be troublemaking? Uh, well, let's define trouble. First, we'll, we'll just look, we'll look at the word above it. It answers intelligence. it. Intelligence. When you intelligent, you're a troublemaker. All for it. The first law in the 48 laws of power says never look smarter than your boss. Never outshine the master. Never outshine the master. So right there, intelligence leads to a type of aggression. Because mm -hmm. when you smart, motherfuckers be. When you smart, by default, you're going to find a better way to do this than those who are not as smart as you that beat their brains on it all night. Keep going, Jeff. You know, I've, I've had this, this issue. I call it, uh, and I'm, I'm sure, bro, I'm sure you can relate to this. I am 100% sure, and if this cat run with you, I'm sure he can relate to this. Who? Your man. I call this... You're going to keep bringing other people into the show. I'm a yes. I call this the case. Dr. Maybe, I love that. Uh, the case of the disappearing heads. I have this problem all the time. Where I'll be involved collaboratively uh, with some people. And I will bring up something. And when I say it, they look at me like I have seven fucking heads when I first say it. Depending upon the involvement of, the intelligence of, uh, and the depth of the project will depend upon how long it takes my heads to disappear. Because all, it's, it's usually either an hour, a week, <laughs> a month, and then all of a sudden, we have now made it to the same fucking place I was back there. All of a sudden, I'm not crazy. My heads have disappeared. Those people are always going to have problems with people lesser than them. You're always going to have, especially when the people above you are not wise enough to delegate to those who are smarter than you. Yeah, I'll start the rant from here. Uh, well, you just going to start with I'm being set up? Okay, set it up then. Got that. Set it up. Set it up. I feel my help coming. Oh, hey. I'm ready. I don't even say anything. Admire my fucking profile. So. Why does it look like that light is shining directly up that sister's ass? You see how that? Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Am I wrong? They can't see that. The thousand people that are watching right now can't see what you're referencing. And you know what? Fuck them because we only have how many likes? We have 1,075 people in here and we don't have 1,075 likes. 
Okay, that's your disrespectful, disobedient ass. Just press the like button. Can't even get you to do that. <laughs> We're black people going to get together when your monkey ass press the like button. Now, press the fucking like button. It's the same energy. Can't even get you to go. Show up every week. Then go to little parties and say the shit that you hear on this show to people who don't watch us so you can sound smart. And but you can't hit the like button. button. You well, cuss them out then, Jeff. No, this is some useful talk. Yo, fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them, fuck them. If you don't see the likes go up in a minute, if you haven't t- pressed like, you're the problem. You're what's wrong with black people. You. Yo ass. You. Don't Wait. look no further than the fucking mirror. It's you. You got to say it like Richard Pryor. Well, fuck it then. Right. Well, fuck it then. <laughs> no, th- th- dude, that's just honest. That's just really honest. It's, it's how hard. How Why hard didn't you is. bite the bitch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just get Jeff Brown. Look, we got 539, 545. Look at that. Look let's at just that. get Jeff Brown into his intellectual rant. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's been following this show knows this is a segment where we, first off, he rants the whole show, but we give him his own little space to do it without interruption except for his co-pastor in the choir supporting his... Oh, yeah. Oh, Sister Sarah? (laughs) Yeah. Sister Music? Oh, oh, yeah. Jeff Brown, without further ado, but before I give you Jeff... Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Don't forget to go to the shroudedlighthouse.com and pre-order your copy of my forthcoming book. It'll be out June 2021. The Shrouded Lighthouse. How to discover the silver lining in any situation shift. Now, let me just say this. We got 2.1 conversion rate on this website. Over 7,000 people have come to visit the website, theshroudedlighthouse.com, but only 2.1% of the people have actually purchased their pre-order. Oh, they came to look. They just came to look. It is a beautiful cover, but get the goddamn book! Yeah. Theshroudedlighthouse.com. Without further ado, Jeff Brown's intellectual rant. Hit the like button. You got a, a lighthouse and then an aurora borealis? I see, I see. I see. But that ain't no goddamn aurora for you. Put it back up. Put it back up. Oh, yeah. With the lights in the sky then. That purple behind the lighthouse. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It the, reminds me of the cocoon the movie. The aurora borealis. Or is that a woman's back with her arms up? That's what I see right there. No, that's her nose. No, not under the water, man. Look! Look at the look at the the, the light blue. See the now. Light. When does the weed wear off? Huh? Cause this shit doesn't got bad. Is this part of your rant? I'm just saying. I see a woman's back. I'm just saying. You see a back. I see a woman's back right there. Screw see the groove right there. Is is she it's at the ten o'clock position from the lighthouse? But is she aggressively hunching? No, she is oh, laying man. there. She is laying there in total bliss. On her, on her stomach. Oh, kind of like uh, like an out of body experience. Yes, and a royal, uh, the royal. Shut your high ass up! You get to the rant. <laughs> what yeah, the fuck? Look here, man. Okay, why why smoke cheap with the weed? The, the expensive weed is only a little more expensive. Buy less weed. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Uh, I kind of forgot what the fuck I was gonna cuss y'all out about, but uh, there's so much. Um, hey, Karen White, I have no idea why you'll find I don't know, like, 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 oh, Karen White was amazing, but go ahead, Jeff, okay. get it's right into it, fine. bro. I said, okay, uh, in keeping with today's subject, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Sigma, Delta, and the classification of males, let's start here. Not with who you are naturally. Let's start with who you are unnaturally. This shit that you're doing, is this natural shit for you? Do you really think it's natural? It's it's not. Uh, this, uh, I think the, the one of the most
most dangerous terms in the hood is this four word phrase you ain't no man yes lord yes That's bullshit here is the definition of a man man any male who cheats death to the age of 18 years old yeah because at 18 years old even earlier cause you might age you even earlier but you do, uh 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 you can go die for your country. If you rob a liquor store, your ass is going for the full ride. Yes, sir. Yes. You a man. The question is, what kind of man are you? Mm. Are you a responsible man? Can you be counted on as a man? Uh-huh. Are you a protective man? My, my, my. Can you provide as a man? Yeah. Those are the questions. Stop telling these dudes they ain't no man. Listen. You man. You in the race, nigga. You just last. Listen. Get your shit together. Uh-huh. I'm a man. Uh-huh. Dot, dot, dot. Uh-huh. And stop letting somebody else's list outside of you define what is in you. Teach, teach up. Make yourself honest about exactly what the hell know exactly what the fuck you are dealing with. Well, well, well. Look yes. at what made your lens point the way it did. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Do this. Find a way to find your daddy. Oh, Lord. And get his side. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I ain't saying pick sides. Lord, 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 Lord. I'm saying by default that if you don't have your daddy's side, yes, you Lord. have. Yes, Lord. I don't, I ain't saying your daddy was right or wrong. Uh-huh. I'm saying measure your daddy by all the shit you know about your mama that your daddy don't. Ooh, my, 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 my. Shit you know your daddy don't know. Yes, Lord. Measure yes. your father by that. Measure his decisions. Uh-huh. Take your mother off of the pedestal of mother. Mm, Lord. Ooh. There are too Ooh. many of you hiding behind. Uh -huh. That's the difference between us, brothers and sisters, is that as black men, we don't have shit to hide behind. Uh huh. You can hide behind the mantle of single mother and continue to do your dirt that fucking destroys our communities. Listen! <laughs> it is you that teaches your son that you don't need a man. So what does that do to his need to be needed? Ooh, hold it about Shanda, Randa, Bada, Shanda, Kabada, Shanda. It is you. Shanda. Talk about the men, Jeff. No. Uh -huh. Talk about you today. You're the mother. You're the cradle of civilization. Uh huh. You don't get to be all that, and don't take none of this heat for what's going on Ooh. in the street. If you can raise a man by yourself, you're gonna have to take some of this heat that's in the street. Ooh. It's as simple as that. Man, find yourself outside of anybody's list. Work on you outside of this categorized list that was made up for you by some people that ain't you. Uh -huh. You work on you. Pray and let your God find you. I'm done. You, Jeff. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a word from visiting pastor Jeffrey. Jeremiah Loquacious Aloysius Brown Pontificae Atlanticus The word was find your way If you a man you were born on the path Bruh. Huh? Bruh. Oh lord Bruh. That's what he was teaching <laughs> Manhood equals a bath. Come on, bro. Huh? Hey. If you. <laughs> was born. Oh, God! Everybody know that. <laughs> <laughs> if you were born without your daddy, uh -huh. that don't mean you were born without a path. You're right. Huh? Yeah. Daddies don't bring paths with them. No. Children come with no. paths. Now your daddy man got in the pathfinder and drove the fuck off, but that is oh, not yeah. 
The point we making it be. Oh. <sighs> that is the longest pack of cigarettes and milk. God damn. <laughs> you could have raised a cow and milked it in this amount of time. Oh, shit. Manhood is a path. Yes. But please understand the difference between a path and a template. See, most people like to follow the path that was already carved before them. So you could be on a path, but if you're not the author of the path, you just using GPS. Ooh, and GPS you, always take you the long way. You following a grid that was laid out before you. Yes, and GPS was written. With Can I have my moment? It, okay. I'm Where's? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting there. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Fuck me happening here. <laughs> I, you know what? Here's what I forgot to do this. <laughs> This is the greatest show ever right now. <laughs> I don't care. I'm a Cindy area. Nobody fucks with our show. Oh my Why god. Show this dope? But just two dudes talking shit. You can't. Let me hit you with this. This is why I said Krishnamurti to me represents the consummate sigma male. Great quote on conformity. Right? And I'm not talking about technologically speaking. Right. Technologically speaking, you need paths and grids laid out. Sure. Right. Sure. You need memory is important to know how to operate a goddamn screw, a screwdriver, and how to use a hammer. Yes. That kind of memory is good. Yes. Right. But when we're talking about conformity, we're talking about psychological conformity yeah. that could that constricts your creativity. Krishnamurti says something very powerful right here. He said. Order cannot possibly be brought about through conformity to a pattern mm. under any circumstances. Mm. What order is he talking about? He's talking about the order of oneself. See, it's easy to be in order on the surface. I was educated. Mm. This is my skill set. This is how I present myself. This is the mask I wear and I appear orderly. Have you ever been in the presence of somebody who appeared orderly, but their energy was disorganized? Mm -hmm. Their energy was chaotic. And you go, on paper, this motherfucker looks right, but energetically, a fucking lemur. this shit don't feel right. Oftentimes, it's because one is insecure that one seeks the order from the outer. If I can be in alignment with the outer and look like I have order, I can matriculate through society. I now have social mobility because I've played a particular part. When you put up that list of men or types of men, what men or what type of man is the one that conforms? Is it the beta? I think it's the beta. In looking at this, I think it's the beta, maybe the omega. Oh, where you get your your conforming model? Yeah. Oh. Um. Remember the sigma. The most of. Yes. yes. The most of. Remember the sigma is outside the system. Damn it all. Damn it all to hell. I'm not following your rules. There ain't no motherfucking Valentine's Day. Ain't no Christmas. Right. Ain't none of that shit. I'm out. Yeah. Holidays are for women and children, which is the truth. Listen to Krishnamurti. Oh. A man that is disciplined, controlled, is free within its own pattern. But that is not freedom. The end of discipline is conformity. Its path leads to the known, and the known can never be free. Mm. The motherfucker said knowledge is a reflex of memory. Right. What does that mean? I mean, I can't, I have the knowledge. I have the knowledge that uh, this show is here. It starts when it starts, ends when it ends. And that's only knowledge because it happened before. So in order to honor it, part of me 
has to accept, embrace, and live in the past. That's why I start my car. That's why I get on the freeway. Because I start my car because last time it started. Mm -hmm. I, I drove towards the 110 because last time it was there. Right. And that's how knowledge serves us yes. in the application of practical things sure. like remembering the road yes. to get here. That's how knowledge helps us. But knowledge wounds us when it becomes spiritual and psychological. Hmm. I am stuck in this place. Right. Remember, trauma is an event that happens. Okay. And whenever there's a, a, a pain body event that happens, you know what else happens? Pain body Something called time binding. Hmm. Now, ideas can be time binding. Break it down, brother. 2,000 years ago, somebody wrote about a dude doing miracles born to a virgin. Now, whether it was true or not, that idea has traversed through time from the moment it happened. So clearly, when that idea was given birth to, it had an impact so powerful that we could still feel the reverberations of the fucking idea today. Hmm. You don't have to believe in Jesus, but that idea happened and it's still here, right? Yes. Trauma works the same way. Hmm. So now, the knowledge of what happened to me. So after the knowledge of what happened to me comes into play, then it turns into now I must identify with what happened. Meaning, I'm a survivor. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm a survivor of abuse. I'm a survivor of poverty. Right? Now guess what you got to do after all of this stuff you've claimed and brought into your identity? You got to defend it. So how are you free? Right. Do you see? Free, I got an idea to this defend. Is, I got an idea to defend. Where does creativity come from? It comes from the void. Michael Jackson said it comes from the void. Right. Shit, I can't sleep at night. If I, if, I, if I don't wake up and write this record down that God gave me, he's going to give it to Prince. That's Michael Jackson's actual words. It happens in between thought. Thought is the past. That's where conformity lies. Well, How can you be an alpha and not be free? Uh, I have, I've come up with my own definition for path. Talk to me, Jeff. Path. Way, trail, or ideas made up and informed by and biased toward another motherfucker's trial and error. Oh, I like it. Say it again. Path, way, trail, or ideas made up, informed by, and biased toward another motherfucker's trial and error. In the name of sweet baby That's Ray's barbecue sauce. This motherfucker failed at it. He failed at it. So the path is you can't run a mile under five minutes. That's the path. Get it. Until somebody did Until it. Until somebody does it. That's called crossing the vector. Yes. Now there's another path. Now, when you cross the vector threshold, it opens up another reality. Right. Right. A whole nother. Whatever the thinker thinks, the prover will okay. prove. What is this bullshit now? You're going to get into a steel silver tube that weighs fucking tons. And you're going to fly it from one continent to another. You crazy. You are fucking out of your mind. That's a path. Right. That is a path that kept us from flight. Does the path that we are born with take us through the crucible of pain? And if so, why? Without question it does. But why? Because uh, there is no, uh, you're only here to grow. How much you do or don't is up to you in circumstance. Mm -hmm. But you are here to grow. What's your definition of grow? Um, the byproduct of pain. No, the definition of grow. The what What does it mean uh, to grow? Uh, to grow, to be able to physically chart. No, no, yeah, growth as itself. Yes. Not not to grow as a verb. No, right. Growth as as itself. Pain, yes. Is the physical manifestation of either progress or regress over a protracted period of time. 
Is part of that progress or regression? You've grown fat. You've grown smart. Right. Yeah. Is part of that overcoming our parents? If you, if you're only lucky, if you only look at it, because whatever you don't like about you is running in your whatever you don't like about your parents, all of it is running in your subconscious program. Can you actually call yourself an adult? If you haven't reconciled your issues with your parents, you most certainly can because they'll try you as an adult in court. Whether you've met, uh, uh, I'm not speaking right. chronological age. I'm talking spiritual. You're right there, and then you go back to kooky kooky land. land. Spiritually, can you consider yourself 75 El Dorado with kooky kooky an adult if you haven't reconciled with your parents? Uh. It is such an important... Okay, I'll go. I see where you're going, so I won't purposely be obstinate. Because yes. that's what you do. That's, yes. you, you fuck it up every time. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here you go. You are an emotional child. Mm. You are still... There if you go. have not moved out of your parents' psychological house... There we go. You're More. You're still an emotional child. I know um, you got it. It's, it's kind of It kind of falls under the same... Uh, uh, tenants that I tell my older children, and I'm about to tell Bailey now because she's she going to be 18 in October. Mm. Congratulations, you're grown. You, you can't wait to say that, huh? If the feces hit the rotary oscillator and life <laughs> leaves you in some type of fuck around, you do understand that this is my house and your home is not this, this glass and walls and bricks. Your home is here. So if I'm in a fucking castle or under a fucking bridge in a box, that's home. You can right. always come here. But, and this is the, the conversation the first morning when we sit down. But, I know I gave you the tools to succeed. Right. You must be using them wrong now that you're back here. Mm -hmm. Your way's not working, so now we're going to do this my way. So the tools for success externally are not the same tools for success internally. No, and they only manifest from the internal tools first. Oh. Because you can have the external shit out, but if you don't have the internal right. Uh-huh. The real pimps see right through that and come get you. Uh huh. Uh, now who wrote this list? I, I don't know. I don't know. And but damn them. I fuck that. I got a list. <laughs> I got a list. What's your list? I'm take you on the ride. It's gonna be worth the trip. You move back in my house as a goddamn grown ass man or woman. The shit that hit the fan. You sleeping in your car or whatever the fuck. That first breakfast. You sit down. I love you. You know you're welcome here. However, your way didn't work. So now we finna do it my way. Number one. And first and foremost, ain't no fucking in here other than me and my wife. Because fucking is for people who got their shit together. People who got their shit together don't live with other people. But people, wait, wait. You don't wait. need to be focused on anything that can wait. make another you while you ain't ready. So wait. Number one, you can wait. fuck, but you can't fucking hear. But wait. What don't if he. Don't see it, don't wait. hear it, don't want to smell it. You what if he. Wait. Uh -huh. What if he hits you with. Huh? What if he hits you with. But fucking is a part of the law of attraction. Sure. We are bringing, giving birth to ideas I'm and businesses. All of that mindless through, through I'm sex. Go, Here's a law, son. No money, no pussy. <laughs> That's a law. Amongst, I ain't gonna call them alpha males no more. The lions I was raised around. Oh, God. Don't be wasting no woman time if you ain't got no money. No money, no pussy. Get your bread right. Okay, that's one. While you're living in here, you can go fuck somewhere else, but you can't fuck in here. Two, there's a curfew. Huh? There's a curfew. Hold on. It is 1 a.m. Hold on, Daddy. I didn't have a curfew in, in college. No, I you didn't have a curfew in college. And without a curfew, look what you did. You wound up sleeping in your car. Okay, staying out after one is for people who got their shit together. You don't have your shit together, so that is that is what the club is. Look at me, I got my shit together. You don't have your shit together, you here. So at one o'clock, you already know I'm up. Nigga, you know I'm up. I'm gonna be right at the front door with my bong and my bowl of cereal. All right, nigga, you can sleep in, the, you can sleep in one of the old cars, but you can't come in here until in the morning. The last and possibly the most important item on my list is that now that you're here, I'm going to take a Sharpie. And I'm going to go around to every usable, perishable product in this house. And I'm going to put a line at the 25% mark. That's your floor. You don't eat, drink, or use anything under that 25% mark. Because that's for me and her. Under them rules, you're going to get your shit together or you're going to get the fuck out. You're going to do one of them. But I tell you what, I am not 
running the Howard and Angelique Brown halfway house for undecided millennials. You're going to get your shit together. Halfway house. I got you. If you got a plan, I'm with your plan. What is the plan? Let's make a plan. Let's make this plan and divide it by 12. Then after we divide it by 12, we'll divide that by 4, and you'll know what you're supposed to be doing every fucking week. And I'm going to check on it, because that's what it's going to take to stay here, because you ain't going to be lazy in here. And if you think we're going to deal with that, oh, you can't kick me out because of the California state law about renters and all that shit, you don't understand. I will rent an apartment across town, move my shit over there, and move back in. And now you can't move in. Wow. That's all I got to do. All right. Turn this pimp shit on you. I don't so, want to do that. I'm so trying to help you out. here's the flip of that. That's all solid shit. However, you can still do all of that. You can still be respectful. He or she still be respectful to the parents uh, that they are that they found themselves uh, dependent on yet again. Okay. It's all well and good. That's still no guarantee that they're gonna land somewhere on their feet. And I would say, typically because... You ain't going to stay here forever on your ass. No, no, no. We're not talking about work ethic or... Oh, okay. You just want to... Uh, uh, look here. I, you I, just, don't, I don't argue with adults that can read. You just, okay. just want to interject? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you like it. I think you're addicted to it. Lazy. I can't stand shit. Hey, hold on. I think you're addicted to it. What's that? Interjection. Oh, interjection. Interjection. Absolutely. You know when they talk about the niggas that talk at the, the movie screen? That's you. That's me, my cousins, them. When you go somewhere and you see uh, my family. Oh, you on a, you, look, he, 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 it's unconscious to him. Okay. He just start talking. You, you know, that me and my cousin, you know, we walk down the street all the time. We get a frozen. I'm product of my genius. Okay. We, we get, you know, we get now laid us, uh, you remember them Chico sticks? Lord have mercy, a Chico stick in a payday, and yeah. <laughs> you remember the bomb pops? Yeah. Chico stick with some Nestle Squeak. Am I the only diabetic? You remember that Coca Cola and some Pop Rocks? to start real quick I will say this though uh, for the kids Jeff is 100% right in terms of an I think everything Jeff laid out was about discipline was about work ethic uh, was about you know at least trying to cultivate a focus but I also factor in the other side too uh, a lot of black parents got to be like Jeff if they want to extract respect from their kids, number one. So they won't have this entitled mindset that everything works on their clock and, you know. And the reason why I put black in it and race in it is because the wealth gap is a real situation, right? But oftentimes, just like hip hop came out of the desperation and, and the destitute, you know, the, that destitute environment mm -hmm. of New York, Right. And Harlem and, and Bronx and all that shit. And you don't get hip hop without oppression. You had oppression. You had drug use. You had heroin. You had Nicky Barnes. You had Frank. So hip hop is born out of that. Just like the blues is born out of what it's born out of. You know, ragtime is born. Again, our parenting styles are born out, out of, of oppression. Come on, man. So when you see a black family we don't say parent like kings and queens and and you've heard this before you've seen a black family say and i i, I know all the brothers that's in here right now have heard this hmm. by the time you 18 you better have a job be going to school or where in the military in the military in the military yeah that's said because they don't have no money. That's you 18. Get out my pocket. There is no room in the nest. Now, 
You go back and you look at the motherfucking orange president we just got rid of. Agent Orange. That's a trust fund baby. Okay. At 70 something. He's a trust fund baby. Right. Oh, my dad gave me a small loan of a million dollars. <laughs> so when you talk about the wealth gap, that affects our ability to parent too. You ain't even ever heard of black men. Very few black men have said this to their children. God damn it, this is the last 50 grand I'm getting. Bezos, his parents gave him 300 grand with the understanding that there's a 75, 80% chance that I ain't gonna be able to pay you back. And where'd they get that 300 grand from? It's, where'd they get that $300,000 from? So this is the point that I'm trying to make. If you wanna raise what society classifies as an alpha, I'd say he has to be an original thinker. And he has to be, he has to be the Shakespeare of his spirit. Mm. He's got to write. He's got to pen his shit. And when I say he, I'm also saying she too. You got to teach your kids how to be the author of their spirit. Damn what I've been through. What I've been through is a staircase that don't even get halfway to heaven. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> you understand? Please do not judge your shit. By this broken glass, razor blades, and pimp piss that I had to crawl through to get to where I am. I tell my children this constantly. It is your job to go out into the world and test what I have given you and please come back to me and tell me what I was wrong about so I can stop being wrong. I'm not perfect. This is the shit that got me here. My shit's only going to get you so far as a matter of fact what as a whole black people need to do is stop is prepare their children for their future and not your past oh man you keep preparing your kids for 1988 preparing them to avoid oh my god 1988 yeah you did a good job now you get your goddamn kid feed now if you told your kids to abandon animal protein and never to use toothpaste again and maybe they wouldn't need. Hey, you know, my dentist gave me some charcoal. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because the, the, the cat's out of the bag now, bro. Some weird, like... Crest, yeah, crest is a wrap. The, the cat's out of the bag. Yes, activated charcoal. I need charcoal. Uh, no, there's a weird t- toothpaste that had, like, peppermint oil and leaves that's, and shit in it. Nigga, that's that shit. Yeah. That's that shit. Baking soda, peroxide, and That's what's in charcoal. it. And well, some peppermint oil. I will say this. Do you know what's in baking So You know what What else? Uh, you know, people tell you, oh, I got this toothpaste. It got baking soda and peroxide in it. You know what else got baking soda and peroxide in it? Baking soda and peroxide. Wow. <laughs> and they're cheap. Like it. It's cheap. It's cheap. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning into the So What Show, we're wrapping this shit up. Jeff has been on a total of 56 rants. It makes for a great show. I'm starting going I mean, the rants are amazing, though. He's just free-flowing. His freestyle is just like Craig G. You know? <laughs> He's like one of the great hip-hop artists of the past. He's an amazing freestyle artist. We love his information. Where do people find and follow you, Jeff? Your work, all the things that you have planned for the future. Where's your crystal ball located? Ah, Mrs. Brown. Uh, uh, Mrs. Brown, look, Brown. It, that ain't Jeff. Take that. No, no, but, but I tell you what, I'm pimped out and swaggy like that. I see you, brother. I see you with your afro. But that look like you niggas know what's going to be going on for after hours after this picture. Yeah, there was a lot of loving. A lot of loving. Uh, but where can they find you, Jeff? track in. Oh. Before everybody leaves while you're Instagram, rambling. Instagram, of course, as you see, IG, uh, at GB Funny Style. Dollar sign GB Funny Styles Cash App. Tomorrow, you can hear me on the DL Hughley radio show. And on Friday, you can see me on the DL Hughley Uncut show because I write for that asshole. Um, Giraffe Balls. Giraffe Balls is going to be late today. Because you out here. Because well, one, I'm out here, and two, we gonna we we, we got to do what we got to do. Explain for our, our our audience. Okay, here's what's going. What on. giraffe balls actually means. Okay, giraffe balls is a show 
where uh, I, and and those of you in the chat room, uh, <laughs> me, there's a there's a war going on between me and my friend and my right about music, but uh, I produce my own music. I uh, okay, yeah, y'all chime in because I, uh, as a matter of fact, we got to get Sarah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sing. Uh, some, some stuff from, uh, <laughs> yes, I call my I call my my joints digga dun duns now. No, I call them. He calls so whatever. They and that's what he does. He hijacks the shit I say and re-engineers that's it. That psychedelic shit that was going on with the cat. That's you, Jeff. Is that me a dial? Is that me a dial? That's you on your that's keyboard. Well, giraffe balls, giraffe balls. We talk about whatever. I get high as giraffe balls right there in the show. <laughs> and whatever you guys want to talk about, whatever you want this weird fucking perspective, then I go back later and cut them in the nuggets. And uh, you can enjoy those too. So look for me on giraffe balls. Uh, Jeff's brownies. We're gonna, oh, the album. The album. Nigga, nigga, okay. You don't want to battle. I have records from my album right now. You have records from your album right now? Right now. Right, right. That'll slap your shit out the okay, sky. Okay, we gonna see. We gonna see. It's gonna be. He posted a beat of, and he uh, was trying to call me out. I said this shit sounds like the group Lakeside, <laughs> <laughs> but they wanna be hip hop now. Okay, so it's hip hop Lakeside. I said, boy, if you don't, in here. you don't put I the hip hop gap man down. You go <laughs> to Jeff TV, G E O F F space T E E V E E, no spaces, and you tell me. You look on SoundCloud, Jeff Breeze Music. You tell me what you hear. No, let me tell you what I hear. What do you hear, sir? I hear a 56-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> look here. Trying to make some hip-hop. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I it's like it was soul in it. No, music I'm not soul saying it don't music. have now, soul. You can rap over it. You can sing over it. No, you. you let, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Jeff. You what? know what your shit sound like? What? It sound like your uncle made it. This about to be a hell of a compliment. Okay. You better take this motherfucking no, compliment, nigga. I don't know when the next one gonna go, come. Go on. See for yourself, though. See for yourself what you're talking about. This shit sounds like when Prince started using hip hop beats. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I know you will. I'll, t- I'll take that. Because that shit was trash to me when I heard. As I get home, I get stressed by my mama. Yeah. When Prince started using hip hop beat, I said, oh, this nigga done okay. went crazy. Boy, you better get back on them motherfucking drums and play this shit yourself. Hey, take this motherfucker off the screen. I don't give a damn about none of that. I don't give a damn about none of that. But that's how your shit sounds. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I, I and I told you it was a compliment. I don't get, sir. Let me let me be crystal clear. <laughs> let me be crystal clear. <laughs> Here is where I am with my making of music. <laughs> it is the place that black people need to get to with whatever you're doing. You need permission from one place. The sun. That motherfucker come up. Go do what you do. Do you think Now you finna make a big ass amazing yes, point. Who do you think? <laughs> do you think that I that I am going if I wanna and I am, I'm gonna have some rap tracks on my album. You know why? Because I don't need anybody's fucking permission. Are you gonna rap? Yes. So now you a Sigma man. Yes. I'm gonna rap. Do you know why? Because it doesn't make sense to me. Boy, you couldn't rap a ra- uh, sandwich in saran wrap. Uh, I'm trying to cross the street. Cars keep coming. Uh, you know how many cars you done, you know how many people you done hit in your car? How you gonna, how you gonna take an art form based on having something to say and then kick people out right when they get to the age to have something to say? You know how? I don't know. I don't Those care. motherfuckers. I did the I, you want me to answer or no? Okay. You asked the question now. Is the shit rhetorical? Now stop being old. <laughs> you you going to be young. You're going to be old. Which one are you going to be, nigga? Look here. Look here. I'm good for that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna tell high. you. I'm going to answer your question <laughs> as a former A&R. Okay. Yes. 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 Your question was, how are you going to create an art form? Well, you didn't create it. But, or you have an art form that allows people to say some powerful shit 
and then kick them out. As soon as they got some powerful shit to say. Because they old. And the art form is based on the youth. No, bruh, bruh. That is Once you s- can I finish? Hey, Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown. Can I finish? Okay. Yeah. Once you get old and irrelevant, I don't give a fuck how much information you got. Two words, Quincy Jones. Is old and irrelevant. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so. Quincy Jones is irrelevant? Now watch me do this. See, you know I'm finna come with receipts. You. you know I'm finna come I with receipts, you. right? Here we go again. Yes. See, I, I have receipts. Quincy Jones is irrelevant. Explain that to me. I have receipts. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, now, I don't want any receipts from you that come from Quincy Jones. And first not off, Quincy Jones. First off, you yesterday. Quincy Jones voice. Wait. First off, yesterday was Quincy Jones's birthday. Happy birthday, Q. So you got to give love to the to come the on, legend, man. the icon. Come on, bro. Yesterday was his birthday. Nothing but love. I sent the birthday message through some people to get to him. Oh yeah, man. Shit, man, you know. It's the, what's the melody, you know? What's the melody? What is the, the you notes? It's only the seven. There's only twelve notes, man. There's only twelve notes, you know, and it's a whole universe in between there, you know. Dude, okay. When I had my aneurysm, I saw a matrix. I I literally saw the fuck matrix, Q, man. man. Yeah, Shit. I fuck with Q. <laughs> First off, Q is Mount Rushmore. He's not on it. He is it. He is the mountain. Yes. Hands down, no argument. But that doesn't mean he's not past his influence. He doesn't have the same influence he had back in the day. So here's the receipt. Modi is doing it. It was trying to do a, a TV show. Okay. And we all <laughs> at motherfucking ABC. Okay. Me, Mo, Q, and some other people. You go in there. They just. They got to take the meeting. Because it's Q. It's Q. But you go in there and listen to some of them ideas that was getting laid down, and you go, oh. Okay. Yeah, we're going to get in here. We're going to do a show, and, and we're going we're gonna to have, like, fake profanity. We're going to call it faux fanity. <laughs> faux fanity? <laughs> We're going to do faux fanity. Okay, so you know, instead so of motherfucker, we're going to say shemalama ding dong. We're going to die Quincy because all his ideas ain't the thing. No, no, no. Ever. That's so not what we're doing, ain't Jeff. All thriller, Jeff. They ain't all the whiz. Jeff. They ain't all the color purple. Not, they ain't all the fresh prints. Come Jeff, on, that's not what we're doing. What we're saying is when the idea is viable okay. and the opportunity is there. And, of course, there's timing. There's everything involved. Then yes, them shits go through the roof. But when you've lost your juice, when you've lost your mojo, it happens to everybody. You know what else it happened to? Michael Jackson. You know what else it happened to? Prince. A lot of niggas don't want to say it. it, it, it yeah, happened to Prince too. Yeah, you don't, you don't believe it, huh? What's Prince's best album? I can't, I, I'm a real, I, I, I'm a true official, not on Prince. Listen, answer just because you, nobody who really knows. You got, you, 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 you bathing in a tub of gummy bears, butt yeah. naked, listening to Under the Cherry Moon. Listen, what's the man's best album? In my opinion, <laughs> this is an unfair statement to say. It's milk and gummy bears in that tub. They go Jeff If I'm backed into a corner and must say <laughs> Prince's best album, I'm going to have to say the same cheat answer I would add, say when people say if you could only take one album with you to listen to forever, what would it be? Emancipation. Because it is a three 